So first let's talk about attributes. The overriding concept that we're looking at when improving pricing performance is minimizing the amount of work that the engine has to do. Prior to this with patches and setups we were trying to do everything that we can to, to improve the performance of what's there. Now that we've optimized the performance, now we'll minimize the amount of work and we'll start with the attributes. So naturally we want to minimize the number that are used. There are upwards of 150 seated attributes that are defined. It's highly recommended that, that if there are attributes that you don't use, you go through and disable them. And make sure that the profile option that controls attribute mapping is set to only use or only map the attributes that are used in active setup. If you have any custom defined attributes, then typically you will have a PL SQL function or two or more that actually provide the mapping for those functions. It is absolutely essential that the queries in those functions be tuned and be tuned to a high degree. Again, remembering that every attribute is evaluated for every line, whether the attribute is used or not, you want to make sure that any custom queries you put in there are tuned properly. And finally, one recommendation if you do have custom functions that map these attributes uh, is to look at what that attribute's used for and apply some logic right at the start that says, you know, if this attribute doesn't need to be evaluated for these set of conditions, then get out. You know, get while the getting's good. Uh, an example, if you have a multi-operating unit installation and you've defined a custom attribute that's only to be used really for one operating unit, it's worthwhile to have a condition that says, if I'm not pricing this operating unit, then get out, return some default value, and bypass any other additional logic. So we've done what we can to minimize the number of attributes we use. We've tuned how those attributes are going to get mapped. Now we'll take a look at the list lines. Again, we want to minimize the number of lines that the engine will possibly select when performing its actions. So make sure we have effective dates in there. Uh, and if you have lists that are no longer used, make sure to inactivate those. Again, the effective dates will help, but as a, as a backup, it never hurts to inactivate any dead lists that are out there. Now one of the biggest benefits that can be achieved when looking at list lines is to consider using pricing attributes instead of qualifying attributes. And the reason for that is twofold. First off, pricing attributes are evaluated as AND conditions. And it's not uncommon to see qualifying attributes that are set up as multiple ANDs. This, if this condition is met, and this condition is met, and this condition is met. If you have several instances like that, those can be very easily and readily modeled as pricing attributes. The benefit to the pricing engine is those attributes defined at a line level as a attri pricing attribute instead of a qualifier will deselect the line sooner. So you could see a significant reduction in the number of lines the engine selects by moving qualifying attributes to pricing attributes. When it comes to defining the item that a given list line represents, recall you can specify it at the item number level, you can use a product category, and the highest level is something called all items. Naturally, if you can avoid it, do not use all items because every call to the pricing engine for a specific order line will grab every all items list line that's out there because that will match, uh, that will qualify. If you have a clear set of categories that might be used to distinguish and, and set up the pricing lines, it's recommended that those be used. The other thing you can do is combine the item structure with pricing attributes. So maybe category by itself isn't enough, but if you add a pricing attribute, maybe that can get you to a more specific definition. And the other recommendation here is to not hesitate to add additional attributes to the product context. So when you hit the list of value on the item attribute, you'll see things that say all items, it'll say product category, and it'll say item number. Those are selections that come from the product context within the attribute setup. You can add additional values there. You can add additional attributes that choose from the category structure, uh, or you can create a custom function that returns some value that may or may not have anything to do with the actual item itself, but is looking at other conditions on the transaction. So don't be afraid to add new attributes. It's part of the advanced pricing capability. When it comes to qualifiers, 
The biggest issue that we see is redundancy. Uh, not uncommon to see modifiers that have qualifiers that are trying to distinguish between certain order types and shipping methods and customers. Uh, I've seen instances where qualifier lists are 150 conditions long and when looking at those see a lot of redundancy, ways that the logic can be restructured to make a little bit more efficient uh, use of the and or conditions. One thing that's recommended in the Oracle literature, there are, and in fact there are Oracle pricing performance white papers, uh, and many of the, the notes on Metalink and my support will tell this, is to avoid using not equals. Uh, I would take this with a grain of salt because in many cases using a not equal condition is actually the best way to describe uh, the condition that's being applied. Uh, so use your judgment on this. Uh, one or two or a handful of not equals is not going to kill the engine. From a maintenance standpoint, it makes the most sense, it makes it the most readable, makes the condition the most understandable. The other thing that we see often is modifiers uh, or qualifier lists that might have a string of a given entity with multiple conditions. So for example, uh, a long list of customers, if it's customer this or customer that, where those lists are intended to represent, for example, a preferred customer list or customers who are participating in a certain type of program. Uh, it's often uh, common to see you know, many ship methods listed. The recommendation there is, rather than continually listing out all of those different entities and the values associated with them, to define some kind of classifying information on that entity and then map a pricing attribute to that classification. So for example, if you have a preferred customer program, either use a flex field on the customer or perhaps use a classification uh, available through the TCA to define is this customer part of the preferred customer program. And then you create a pricing attribute that's a simple yes no evaluated for the customer. You create a function to return that attribute and then your modifier uh, has one qualifier that says if customer in preferred program equals yes and you're done. You don't have to continually massage the list. Uh, it's very simple, it's very readable and improves maintenance and it makes the engine perform better.